Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today I've got another pair of hands in the workshop. I'm going to be making this great little assembly jig and it's pretty simple. It has a, a movable part back here so you can move it however, whatever size you need. And whenever you're making smaller parts, little projects in the workshop and you need something to hold it, you've seen me many times using this on the base of a leg or something, uh, but now with this I'd be able to put a, an upright, maybe a, the side of a, a cabinet or something, maybe the leg of a table, and you can just clamp it up quickly like that, then you can use it for setting up for if you need to drill it or use your air nailer or something like that. Uh, a really quick way of being able to hold something nice and firmly that you know is not going to fall over. So stick around and see how I make this great little assembly jig. Let's get started on this little assembly jig. And I'm going to be using the jig that I made, so I'm using a jig to make a jig. Um, but the uh, jig that we made uh, a few weeks ago, so I'll be using that. And this is the base that I have here, some nice flat plywood, uh, some good quality plywood. What I need to do is a couple of uprights and I need to do some square corners uh, and the squared off corners. So what I need is something like this. I need a base like that and a couple of uh, corners like that. So what I'm going to do, I've got some bits and pieces here but I'm not really happy with any of them. So I've got some um, plywood here, some nice thick plywood, some scraps and pieces. I'm going to take these over to the sliding miter and I'll cut those at 90 degrees and then we'll cut a 45 degree angle on them and uh, that will be the parts and then we'll do some uprights and bases as well. So when I see this mark like this, I'll know that this and this side are the 90 degrees. Now that I know that this is the 90 degree angle here and here, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of bulk. And I'm not going to go point to point, I'm, I'm just going to take a little bit off the top there in case I need these for some other clamping later on in the future. I have all my pieces cut now and this one's just going to be bolted down on this side but I want to be able to be able to move it back and forth a little bit so what I'm going to do now it's going to look like this when it gets done of course and what I'm going to do I took the center out of my uh, dowling jig and I just found a piece of wood that's just about perfect for that and what I'm going to do is align that like that and I've got some lines on there and I can align that like that so that when I cut 
when I drill holes in here, I can make three sets of them. Then I can take the dowling jig over to my base and do a couple of equal um, holes there. And they'll all line up so that I can move this back and forth a little bit and have a little bit of... Okay, and that's all lined up. I'll drill the first hole. Now I can actually put in one of the, the locking pin for this so that it'll find that hole and the next one I drill I know will be exactly now I just go along and do the other two Now the next thing I need to do is to glue my upright on and because I've got a little bit of end grain here I'm going to use epoxy glue and I have my aluminum uh, right angle holder here so that when I put it together I'll be able to make sure that it's perfectly vertical uh, and then I'm going to pin it with my 18 gauge air nailer. Well, I finally got the router table and the jig all set up, and I did run a little test on this one. Uh, the first one I ran, I thought the slot was just a tiny bit loose, so I tightened it up a little bit, and then the second one is perfect, so it's all ready to go. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, I've got these spacers, so I'm going to run each side, so I'll run this side, then I'll move both the spacers to this side, I'll run the other side, then I'll move just one spacer to this side, so there'll be one spacer on each side, and that'll be the center one, and I'll be drilling right through the, the wood on that one, so I need to get going. So while I was working on the bottom, I also took a moment to countersink where the bolts are going to go through. And I like using these uh, flat top bolts because they also have a hex. You can put a hex drive in them as well. So let's flip that over and put some of our uprights on. Well, and that concludes my assembly jig, and it also concludes my video. You know, it works really well. You loosen this part up here, and you can reposition this side to whatever it is that you're making, drawers or little cabinets, that sort of thing. And, you know, some of the pictures that I saw, they had two of these together, so they'd have two here and two over here. And I thought, you know what, these little clamps like this, um, little one hand clamps. They're perfect for this. They hold tight. They're easy to use. It's not going to move around. They're, they're, they're perfect for this kind of a thing. And I can put one on each side. Um, and the other thing with this is I can move these. If I have to put them at an angle somewhere, I can do that as well. The other thing I like about this is if I have to, I can move this down so that it can hold things that way as well. So, for example, if I'm making a cupboard and I want the legs, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what the assembly would be, but um, you know, you could do something like that as well. So there's, you know, there's all sorts of variables that you can use these things with. So I'm pretty happy. I wish I'd have made something like this years ago. This is going to be like having another pair of hands in the workshop. 
And how many times have you seen me doing assemblies using one of my wooden clamps here and, you know, putting a leg in that way and, and holding it up? Um, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they would fall over because they're not that steady on here depending on what's on top. Um, and I think this is going to be a really good addition. So looking forward to using that in the future. And as I said earlier, that concludes my video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.